and I'm one of the Tradition Kitchen's ambassadors this summer. And Julia is one of the lovely co-founders of Tradition Kitchens. And what we like to do is, it's all about trying to connect people through cooking and through this shared kitchen space. And what this organization originally began as was cooking classes more in person in the Atlanta area. But with all the things going on in the world right now, obviously with the coronavirus, we've gone online and that's opened up a really awesome opportunity to have like interns and lots of classes with lots of different people, teachers from across the world and the country and as we've demonstrated here, attendees and students from all across the world, which is so awesome and more than what we would have hoped for. And yeah, we just want to connect people through our love for cooking. And now, drum roll, I think I'm going to hand it over to our chef for the evening so we can start the party of cooking. Hey everyone, so my name's Nikki. Um, I'm going to be cooking today. Uh, it's called tamarind soup, uh, like pork tamarind soup and a um, avocado. There really is no, it's just like a really basic name. It's just avocado, I, sugar, and ice. Um, oh, actually sugar, avocado, milk, and sugar. Um, and so both of those things. So I grew up, I was born in LA, but I grew up in the Philippines from maybe when I was like seven to and then did all my schooling there until until college and then after that came back here to the states so I was raised there and so I if there's one thing I miss about about back in the Philippines it's the food uh, I think my palate is very much um, of Filipino palate um, Ethnically, kind of like my background is like Filipino, Chinese, but then like my mom's whole family migrated to um, Los Angeles in the 70s. And so it's kind of like these three different cultures and food wise as well. Um, but tonight I'm going to be showing some um, food that's from the Philippines. And the reason why I chose these is because uh, Filipino food has become a little bit a bit more pop popular and come in recent years but I don't find these uh, like this isn't as common I think to be found in restaurants um, so the first one is so I think what I'm gonna do is I struggled like which one to choose um, but I think what I'm gonna do both and I'm gonna start with the tamarind the pork tamarind soup which is kind of like I describe it to people as kind of like a tom yum, if you're familiar with the tom yum soup and like with Thai dishes. It's kind of like that. It's the Philippine version of that. And then it's more, I know tom yum, I think it's the, the flavor of the tamarind soup is like, like salty and like sour, more sour and then a little bit of saltiness, which is common in a lot of Filipino food. It's like, those are the, the, the flavors there, salty and, and sour, which I love. Um, and then I think while we're waiting for the soup to boil, I will be going into the avocado dish because that's like super, that's super quick. The soup takes about an hour. So we might not finish it, but I'm gonna show what it looks like when all the ingredients are in. Um, but in the middle, I think we can take a short break and do the avocado dish, which is like really basic and maybe takes five minutes. It was really yummy. Um, okay, so just starting with the soup, um, I, I put up the recipes up here so I don't forget what I gave Ruby and Julia. Um, so in a pot, basically you first saute, so you first wanna brown the, the pork. So I use like pork ribs, baby back ribs, and I just like slice them into, you know, separated the bones or separated them into, into each of like the little ribs. Um, and then you want to brown it first before you add the water and create the soup. And then at the end you add in the vegetables because you don't want to, um, you, you want to put in the vegetables towards the end because you don't want it to get like too soggy, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the meat, saute the meat. So, so to start with that, 
I'm turning on the heat for the pot and then just adding oil. And then actually need to put an onion. So I just do about like half an onion. So is everyone here familiar with Filipino food or is this like your first exposure to it? Oh, I think whoever's talking is on mute. I'm actually not very from, well, I cannot speak. <laughs> I'm not actually very familiar with Filipino food. This is really one of my first experiences with it. So I'm very excited to watch everything come together tonight. So just basically like cubing, cutting it into cubes. Just trying to remove some of the skin. This is good. This is not, this actually seems like a lot. I think I'm not going to use this whole thing because it already seems like a lot. Also, if anyone has any questions and they either don't want to unmute themselves, it's not a good time, or they can't, feel free to put it in the chat and I can like read it out loud to share with everyone else. Flip this over. I think I flip this. Oh, here we go. You basically just want to get it till it's glassy. Deborah just asked in the chat, did you already brown the ribs? No, it's still there. Wanted to get the onions until it's glassy, saute it until it's glassy, and then put in the ribs. We're going to wait for that a bit. In the meantime, I am preparing. Um, fish sauce. I don't know if you guys use fish sauce, but I usually just use this one. Um, there's, there's like other kinds out there. This one is like not as salty. I like using this. And then put this in after the meat has browned. So it, it kind of like adds the saltiness to the meat. So it's not just all sour. And then this is the this is the soup mix that we use. So I've actually never made this fresh. My husband's um, my mother-in-law has made it fresh. I've never like everyone in the Philippines just uses this soup soup mix, and you can get it at any Asian store and even like a like in a Chinatown, they'll have this. Or you can also buy it on Amazon, but then it's like a pack of fourteen or something.
Abigail is asking if this is a dish for a special occasion or if this would just be like a normal whenever uh, type of recipe. It's just a normal whenever recipe. Okay, I think that's good. Sorry, uh, Rosa's asking, can we use green onion? Um, not green onion. It needs to be one of those ball onions. So either, I think you could use a red onion, a yellow onion, or a white onion. Okay. I'm gonna break these onions a bit. So, I will put in the meat now. Nikki, do you like to buy meat at a local butcher or just any grocery store? Yeah, I just got these at I would get them wherever. Um, I just haven't been able to find them at a grocery store. I got these at the local butcher. So it's three tablespoons of the fish sauce. What kind of cookware do you prefer? Like, is it a um, stainless steel? Any preferences? On yeah, I think actually for this one, if you have like a non a good nonstick pan, a pot, we used to have one. It was just like starting to chip away. So this is a stainless steel one I'm using right now, but it tends to like the the meat tends to stick to it. So. Nonstick is good. So you can see how it's just like browning like this, and that's all that's all you want it to do. Let me try to move it around. It's funny, Julia, you were saying that maybe my parents could come on, like my mom and dad, but my mom does not cook at all. Oh, that's funny. You, so who taught you all these amazing dishes? This is just, I mean, we have this when growing up in the Philippines, they would have it in restaurants um, and like help at home, they would cook it. And then, so it was just when I came here and you know, you're missing food from back home that I just looked up recipes online. Or there's other, actually how they cook it at home is like they add, what's it called? They call it gabi in the Philippines, it's like a taro. So the soup is actually a little bit like cloudy and I actually don't like that. I really like clear soups. So I don't use that. It, become, it also makes it thick, I don't really like that. So I leave that out.
What are some spices that are distinctly Filipino? Mm. There's a, so fish sauce is part of a lot. Um, like sometimes we'll have a, a certain fried fish. It's, we call it a milk fish. Um, and people use, like, it's a very, a lot of our foods come with a lot of like sauces that you not, they're not like cooked in the sauce, but it's like you cook the dish and then you eat it with like a little, with sauce on the side and rice. So a lot of like meat and fish dishes. So there's fish sauce, which we eat with um, this fried milk fish. Um, and then there's also like shrimp paste that people eat with like green mangoes which actually I've never seen here, but it's just like a salty shrimp paste. Mm. Is a green mango, uh, sort of, like, is it just not ripe or? Yeah, it, it's just not ripe. I've never thought of trying that. Yeah, it's, so it's very, again, like very sour and then a, a salty topping or sauce on top. Um, okay, so that's all browned and then, you just add eight cups of water. And then you just bring this back to a boil. Abigail wants to know, how are you managing both the cooking and the <laughs> camera? I'm holding the iPad with my left hand. Very ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> I should note that Nikki has many talents. We met <laughs> a while back uh, and it was through a, a cool community in New York City that I used to be a part of that still exists in a way, even though there's not a physical location, but it was for people who had amazing ideas and wanted to make those ideas happen. And Nikki, while you're cooking, can you tell us about your most recent project? I think I saw a post on one social media channel that I follow you on. Um, yeah. Zip codes, right? Yep. So I started a zine series called um, history of things and it's basically and the first issue is called the story of the zip code and so it's kind of like a mini zine with some uh, surprises in it it's kind of like a physical digital experience um, but you order it's a physical thing you you order in the mail um, and it's it's the story basically the story of how i basically discovered that when the zip code was new to get people to use it because there was a lot of resistance to using it they had to create like a cartoon character to encourage people to use the zip code and the cartoon character's name is mr zip and um they there was like a whole campaign around it like not just ads, but like comic, like comics, like one comic was called like Mr. Zip and the five little digits. And then like just public service announcements on TV, radio ads, 
um, like music videos, just like combining like these these music groups. 1964, like July 1964. Um, yeah, it was very extensive. And so that was really fascinating to me. And I basically that, so that was like the first issue. This is a story of how that came to be. And um, so the other, the other, I just have like ideas right now for the other ones. I haven't made them yet, but just very fascinated by like how these, um, how these ideas that today are just everyday things. Um, I, I'm just like very fascinated by the stories of how they were first introduced to the world and kind of um, why someone thought about that as, as a solution to, you know, what problem and like what challenges did it, did it face and what, what did those people behind it do to, to kind of adapt to how people were reacting to it. And so that's always been interesting to me. So some of the other issues that I am planning to do is like the history of um, the little traffic man, like the pedestrian light, um, the history of the actually the entire mail system is really fascinating to me too. I actually like, I went to the Postal Museum in DC and learned that so Benjamin Franklin was like the first postmaster general and he was basically the postal route was on what is now Highway 1. And it was, it used to be called, um, I think the King's Highway. And it was basically just like dirt road through, you know, through the woods. And it was the postmaster general basically would know what the route was because they would like mark the trees along the way with an ax. And that's kind of how they got, um, you know, spread, able to coordinate all the different colonies. That is yeah. so fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love this. I didn't even realize there was a U.S. Postal Museum. I feel like they should be getting a lot of love right now with it. Um, Have you been there? I've never been there. Now I'm looking it up. That's so It's cool. very fascinating. <clears throat> my favorite museum I've ever been to was a, the New York Transit Museum. I thought that was really cool. I don't know mm. if anybody here I haven't been there. You would like it. And I think others might find it interesting, just like the story of the subway and how it mm. Anyways, th thank you for sharing as you're cooking. That's one of the things I love about cooking with, with people is you get to know more about their story and their families and their passions. Yeah, so there's that. And then what else did I have on there? Um, yeah, like history of the traffic light, history of the car horn, the elevator, time, when the concept of time was created. Like, you know, there were times when there was no time, no standard time. And people would just like meet, whether it was like sunrise or like sunset. <laughs> So I'm just prepping the veggies that go into it. So it's just two. This one is just a daikon radish, which again, you can get in Asian stores and just peeling the outside. And then you just slice it into just slice it up. This is leftover from the last one that I made. So it, would, it, it comes usually like, so this is like half of it. So I just use half each time. And it doesn't have to be super thin. It can go even a little thick because it gets, um, it softens once it's boiled in the soup.
that's a very large radish. Or maybe it's just looked large because it's Yeah, like, it's a it's a it's called a daikon radish. So it's is it's it, not is like it, the small red one. Yeah. Is it as um uh strong or is it sweeter? What how would you describe it? I think I've had one. It doesn't really have doesn't really have that much of a taste. I think it's more of like a texture thing. Mm. But it kind of absorbs whatever your soup is, your flavor. Um, okay, so I'm just going to set this aside. And then... So I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to prep all the veggies. So that one and the water spinach. So this one, again, I got from, from Chinatown. And what I like about this is that the ends are, that the stems are like these, they're like hollow inside. So it's, and it's like crunchy. So when you, when they're in the soup, I used to, um, cause we were gonna cut it like this into maybe like two or three inch pieces. And then when I was younger, I used to like use that. Sometimes there's like a really thick one that's like a big straw. And I use that to kind of like drink the soup, like a straw. <laughs> Let me just wash this a little bit. Rosa's asking, she's not sure if she'll be able to get the radish in Argentina. Is there something else she could replace it with? Hmm. I'd have to get back to you on that. You can also use tomatoes. Do you use all of all of those leaves or do you cut part of the ends off? I use all of them. Yeah, the tricky thing with that is it comes in such a huge bunch. It's very cheap, and it, but it comes in such a huge bunch that it's if you don't use it right away, it'll go bad. So I always try to use it up. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside and then let's do the avocado right now while we're waiting for the soup to boil. So basically the soup just has to boil um, and then wait for the soup to boil and then let it simmer for about 45 minutes. And then when it's close, when the 45 minutes is close to being up, then that's when I put the, um, oh, actually, I should put the soup mix right now. Where is it? So just one of these for the eight cups of water. Deborah's asking if you can't find water spinach, what should you use instead? Um, hmm. I mean, I guess you could use just regular spinach. Yeah. 
just the whole package. What's, um, you are using a wooden spoon? Yeah. Do you have any favorite spoons, like when you're cooking that, well, I guess your mom wasn't much of a cook. Maybe your dad used <laughs> or anything like that. Oh my God. My dad treats cooking like a science experiment. Is that a good um, thing or a bad thing? <laughs> and that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. <laughs> um, not really. I either just use this wooden spoon, not sure why, or or just like the tongs. I'll just use that to kind of, because I need to grab the, the ribs. Um, so we'll just wait for this to boil. I might actually add the radish right now. Just because if I'm going to eat it later, I want it to get the flavor already. It looks like a potato to me, like yeah. a thin potato. You would never know. Yep. So in my family, uh, I shouldn't expose this on recorded <laughs> video, but my mom usually uses a soup stock. That's like, um, I know you showed that other one, but she never makes um, her own like bouillon. And so I guess the broth is coming from the, the bones and it's extra. Mm -hmm authentic, but I've never, maybe my grandmother did it with chicken back in the day, but I've never seen it made this way. Ruby, did you ask Deborah's question yet about um, water spinach? Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay. So on to the break time dessert. So we're gonna do um, avocado, milk, and sugar. It's basically like, I think of it as like deconstructed avocado ice cream is kind of what it's like. Um, I don't remember if this was in the description, but in the Philippines, avocados are a dessert. Whereas here in the States, I know it's more of like used in guac and stuff. So more like savory. So when I first moved here, it took me a while to kind of like shift my mindset, like shift my mindset into thinking of it as a, as a savory dish, because in the Philippines, it's always like a dessert or either an ice cream or shakes or, or this thing that I'm, that I'm about to make. And then, so I think I've made it in grad school once and people just have weird reactions when they see that you're putting in like milk and sugar. Where's um, my knife? This is tricky, okay. I would say one serving is about um, maybe two avocados. So I might do two servings so I can just like keep it. Actually, let me just do one. I'll just do one for now.
So you just, um, I know it's so bright. I guess it depends whether you want it to be more creamy or, or chunky, but I will sometimes like slice it like this, just so it's a little bit chunky. And then just kind of like scrape it out. The soup is boiling. Just want to mix it up to make sure all the everything is submerged. And then just put it to simmer and I might cover it. those avocados is kind of hard. So you want it to definitely be a ripe avocado. Um, then I'm just going to add the milk. And I would just add it maybe until like half. Kind of like cereal when you can sort of start seeing it come up from the sides. It looks so pretty. <laughs> Abigail, show us how it's going over there. Ooh la la, very nice. I broke the rules a little bit because I prefer on the creamier side, so I'm mashing them a little bit. Oh yeah, that's good. And then just sugar. I seriously have never thought of avocado as a dessert. I'm fascinated. Although I think I once had a friend who had avocado gelato, which I thought was intriguing. So maybe it's like this. I'm using brown sugar, but I usually, I mean, 
when I used to eat it. It's just because I only have brown sugar now. But if you want to kind of like keep the color, maybe white is better, but it's not as healthy, so. So just that, and then you either like put it in the fridge to chill or just drop in a couple ice cubes in there. That's it. You really like for the sugar, it's really depends on you. How sweet. Mm. That was about right. What do you think? I like it. I think I might have added a little bit too much milk to mine because it's very like creamy. But yeah. this reminds me of like my sister and I have been making like banana ice cream where we've been like blending together like frozen bananas and like milk mm -hmm. and stuff. And it reminds me of that. And I really like it. This is the one part where you wish we were all like in the same place because you could all like, you know, try it and be competing. So this is yeah. the one. downside of Zoom. No one's invented the, the scratch and sniff version, the taste and, <laughs> taste and pass, but. So do you usually do it in Atlanta? Yeah, so before uh, Corona, pre-Corona, we had all of our classes in person in different homes in different neighborhoods and it was really fun. We all got to cook together and meet each other. It was people of all different ages. And then once um, quarantine hit, we went to all virtual. So the beauty of it is, you know, we have someone from Argentina and Australia and New York and Pittsburgh and Boston and all over, um, but we aren't in the same place. So, uh, right. you know, that's hard, but we try to recreate it online. And then we've, you know, brought new wonderful ambassadors into the, our community, like, like Abigail and Ruby. So, well, Abigail's an honorary ambassador. <laughs> she introduced us to Ruby, so she gets credit. <laughs> oh, really quick, uh, Deborah's asking how much sugar. About how much? Mm, I would say maybe two tablespoons. Yeah. Roughly two tablespoons. And welcome to Esther. We're glad you're with Hi. us. Hi. Sorry, I had some trouble uh, accessing the site. No problem. We're happy to have you. This is the pork soup and the avocado milk. Yep. Yes. We just finished the avocado and the soup is bubbling and brewing and how's it going, Nikki? Let's take a look. I think our, our teacher is the only one who's here's, making the soup. So here's the avocado, Esther. It's basically just um, mashed up avocado, um, sugar, like two tablespoons sugar, one avocado and milk like just as much as you would put like with cereal where it's sort of halfway through kind of peeking through the cereal and then ice cubes. And then we already put most of the ingredients in the soup. It's just simmering now. So basically um, 
get everything to a boil. So the meat, just like sa sauteing the onions, browning the, the pork. I have like baby back ribs as my pork. And then putting in eight cups of water um, as the soup. And then adding the um, soup mix. This is basically what we use back in the Philippines. Everyone uses this. Um, and you can also, um, there's different kinds of, of tamarind in the Philippines. It's called sinigang. Um, so this is sinigang na baboy. Baboy is pork. There's also like sinigang na salmon. You can do sa salmon and what else? I see some people use shrimp. Oh, you show me the package. Where in the, uh, uh, here in California, can I get it? You can get it at, do you know, like a 99 Ranch? Do you have one of those? Where are you in California? Livermore, California. Livermore. Mm. You can get it at any Asian store, at any Asian grocery. At any Asian grocery store. Okay, I'll have to Google yeah. to find those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, and then putting every, putting the, the water in and the, the mix in and then just bringing it to a boil. Um, and then once it gets to a boil, just letting it simmer for 45 minutes. So I think, I think there's 30 minutes more. We probably won't finish it all, but I'll just show you what it looks like when all the ingredients are in. So I already put in the, um, so it's a bit of sour ester. And then when I was sauteing the, after I sauteed the onions and put in the meat to brown the meat, um, I also put like three tablespoons of fish sauce. So it's the flavor of the soup is basically like a salty and sour, mostly, mostly sour, but, but some, some savoriness. Um, and then the last thing to do is just the water spinach that I'm going to add. This usually goes in the very end, but I just want to show, show you guys when everything's all in there. I know she calls that water um, spinach. Is there a difference between that and the regular spinach? Um, you know, I actually don't know why they use this versus regular spinach. Maybe it's just the availability in the Philippines. Maybe this is cheaper. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to get back to you guys. I'll, I'll get back to, I'll tell Julia and Ruby whether, um, you can actually just substitute it with regular spinach. But I was saying like the, I don't know if that's the same with spinach, but like with this one, that the stems are kind of crunchy. And so it adds this, that texture to it. Yeah, I had a spinach salad a little while ago in the stem and that stem and that's a little crunchy too. Mm, okay. That might that looks like it's crunchier. <laughs> so that I mean so that's it. And then once it once it stays in there for a bit more um, it just won't become as green. It'll, it'll fade a little bit, um, but it should still be crunchy. And then basically I just eat that with, um, with white rice. So I just have a little bit of rice in my spoon and like some people like have a bunch of rice and then put the soup to kind of like, um, make it so that the rice sort of like swimming in the soup. I don't really like doing that, but I just kind of like have a little bit of like the rice and then the soup and then the, the meat and eat some of the veggies. Sounds so good. <laughs> Do you make your else? rice in a rice cooker or in a pot? What's your secret to having good rice? Yeah. I always get it. <laughs> I use, um, let me grab it. I 
hurt somebody's little puppy dog cow. <laughs> Are you sushi rice? Oh, um, nice. It's just like short grain rice. Cool. Um, I mean, you could use any kind of any rice, really. I use a I use a rice cooker, but I've also but sometimes that takes longer. When I'm sometimes in a rush, I just cook it in a little sauce saucepan saucepan sauce pot. Awesome. And yeah, that's it. Does anyone else have any last minute questions? I'll look up for all of you who were asking about substitutions. Um, I'll do a bit more research and then pass that along to, to Julia and, and Ruby. Avocado milk looks good. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a deconstructed ice cream, avocado ice cream. Love it. Amazing. Well, this has been such a great group and Nikki, we're so thankful to you. I'll let Ruby close us out. Sure. Yeah, just like a big thank you to all our class attendees and a big thank you to our teacher as well. Couldn't have done it without you. And yeah, uh, definitely if you'd like to come to other classes, we don't have anything scheduled officially yet but we have some things in the works so if you have Facebook you can find us at Tradition Kitchens on Facebook and the same handle for our Instagram and also if you end up making this dish or if you were working on it tonight or anything like that definitely like either like send us a picture over social media or you all have my email if you would like to send me the picture because we'd love to share it if you want and yeah we'd love to see you guys again at more classes you guys have been a great audience and couldn't have done the class without you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing your kitchen with us. And so happy to have so many international visitors this time. <laughs> everyone stay safe and healthy and eat good food. Yeah. Can you send me the recipe for the avocado milk? Did yes. everyone get the recipe, like, when they signed up? I yeah. Yeah, it, okay. went, it went out with the invite email. Uh huh. Okay, I'll I'll do a bit more research on like the substitutions and then also like send links and maybe some stores because my family's in California. So maybe if I send you a couple of the names of the grocery stores there, it, there's one near you, Esther. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye.